Hi, it's Rob Bryanson, and welcome back to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Today's entry is dated December 4th, 2008. You can read along if you go to tenthdimension.com slash blog. And today's entry is called, We Start with a Point. One of the most unfair criticisms I hear about this project it is, that, is that it somehow misuses or misunderstands the term dimensions. In what would a Linelander really see? We talked about how the definition of dimensions that this project uses is aligned with the most basic definition of spatial dimensions as found in Wikipedia. What I want people to understand is that the extra dimensions physicists are describing are still spatial dimensions, or as some physicists call them, space-like dimensions, and my way of visualizing the dimensions builds from that premise. Now here's an easily related concept from Wikipedia, and you can look this up if you, uh, if you want to uh, read along with me here. It's called the Point Line Plane Postulate from Wikipedia. The Point Line Plane Postulate in geometry is a collective of three assumptions or axioms that are the basis for Euclidean geometry in three or more dimensions. And three or more dimensions is the important part of that phrase. Number one is the unique line assumption. There is exactly one line passing through two distinct points. Number two is the number line assumption. Every line is a set of points which can be put into a one-to-one -one correspondence with the real numbers. Any point can correspond with zero and any other point can correspond with one. And then the third axiom is the dimension assumption. Given a line in a plane, there exists at least one point in the plane that is not on the line. Given a plane in space, there exists at least one point in space that is not in the plane. So as I say, the three or more dimensions is the important part of that phrase because that's the logic that we use to build the additional dimensions. It sums up what we're playing with here. Using what we know about the first three dimensions, we can continue to stack one dimension upon another using the same logic. Now here's one more idea for you to consider. In You Are Me and We Are All Together, we talked about renowned physicist Richard Feynman's proposal that the reason all electrons are absolutely identical is because there is really just one electron in the universe, whizzing back and forth within timelessness. And the trillions of electrons we see around us are just multiple copies of that same electron as it completes its journey back and forth from the beginning to the end of time. Why are all electrons identical? If you look up point particle in Wikipedia, you'll see that electrons are described as point-like particles, which means they actually have no size and no dimension, just like the point with which we started our 10th dimension animation. So this time around, let's think back to the original animation and review how this way of visualizing the extra dimensions relates to points that are moving within the dimensions, and how we can start from our first three dimensions with which we're so familiar to imagine the extra dimensions beyond space-time. We start with a point at, posi at position zero. Then we can imagine a second point and create a line segment with these two points at the end. We can imagine a line passing through these two points extending to infinity in either direction. Adding all of the possible values together on either side of the point we started from creates a perfect symmetry, which adds back up to where we started. Zero, a point of indeterminate size. This will be true no matter where you start or how many dimensions you're imagining, because each new dimension adds two more directions and they'll always head towards infinity in either direction. But what do we mean by infinity? Infinity is a tricky word. Is there more than one infinity? Or is it more correct to say that there are many ways to get to infinity? If I start counting 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, there's no end to the numbers that I could count. If I start counting 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, there's also no end to the numbers that I could count. If I start dividing any number in half, and half again, and half again. There's no end to the number of times I could keep dividing that number in half. Each is a way to get to infinity. Now, are each of the infinities we just imagined a different size? We should always keep reminding ourselves, infinity is not a number. So even though one infinite set 
can be a subset of another infinite set, which means that saying one version of infinity is larger than another does have a certain usefulness in helping to imagine all this. Ultimately, all infinities are the same size, because all infinities are of indeterminate size, just like the point we started from. Let's imagine that first and second point again. They could have been anywhere, in any dimension, and there would be an infinite number of points on the line that passes through those two points. But even though there are an infinite number of points on that line, there still could be another point that we could imagine that's not on that line. No matter where we place that additional point, we'll now have to think of not a line, but a plane. And that plane will extend to infinity in both of the new directions we just added. Again, this new point could have been anywhere, as long as it isn't on the line we started from. But no matter where we place it, the plane we're creating is still just a subset of all possible planes. And no matter what plane we imagine, we can still add an additional point that is not on that plane and requires us to add an additional dimension. Again, with two new directions that extend both ways to infinity. This cycle can be repeat, repeated endlessly. Define a system. Add a point that isn't within that system. Add a dimension for that new point to be within, which adds two new opposing directions that each extend to infinity in either of those two new directions. For the first two dimensions, or for the first few dimensions, this is easy to imagine with graphs and arrays. We can imagine a two-dimensional data set, a two-dimensional array of brackets x, y with values for two different coordinates, x on one axis, y on the other, simple to draw on a piece of paper. But this gets harder to picture as the number of dimensions climb. So while we can easily define a seven-dimensional array with seven different coordinates, visualizing the graph that could represent such an array is not an easy thing for our 3D sensibilities to accomplish. So if we're trying to visualize our reality as coming from extra dimensions, it's helpful for us to keep imagining what new degree of freedom each new dimension is adding. And that point line plane postulates idea of using a current dimension to define a line, the next dimension up to define a plane, and the dimension above that to define a space created by those potential lines and potential planes is a way for us to keep visualizing past what we as 3D creatures are used to thinking about. Now we're going to think or we're going to continue talking about these ideas next time with an entry called You Are a Point Within the Omniverse. In it, we're going to go back to the idea that the omniverse is an unfolded symmetry state, which we can think of as a perfectly balanced zero. But one of the ideas we haven't talked about much is how that symmetry state is always ready to fall out of balance and create a universe. It's like a, a pencil balanced on its tip, always ready to fall one way or another and create a new pattern in the information that becomes our reality or any other. To finish, Here's a song sung for me by Ron Scott, one of the 26 songs attached to this project. This one is about the mysterious spark of life and consciousness, a point moving within the omniverse. The song is called Burn the Candle Brightly. That's all for now. My name is Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey. Each of us carries it within us. Each of us has a little spark That moves us to dance in the sunlight And lights our way through the dark I want to burn the candle brightly Never let it fade Burn the candle brightly Let it light my way Blazing all its glory Some like a flicker in the night I want to burn the candle brightly Never let it fade Burn the candle brightly Let it light my way Some go gently to the darkness Some will rage to the end All of us carry it forever that we tend 
So when this journey is over And that beautiful spark is finally gone We can see that the vessel is empty But we know that the light carries on